Sports Spectacular. Back at the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland. The Bullets off to a quick start in the first 2-0-1 of the ball game. They lead the Jazz 8-2. Lenny Robinson, who scored the only two. Now Unsell and Rich Kelly. Kelly forced it. Good rebound by Dandridge away from Lenny Robinson. Elvin Hayes wide open. You can't give him that shot. And the defense is doing it for the Bullets right now. Jazz taking only one shot. Bullets controlling the board and controlling the basketball game. You know, we have another big uh, CBS game this afternoon, the Denver Nuggets hosting the Boston Celtics, who still have a shot in that playoff. You saw the standings before the game. They're going to be going to that game from time to time. Gary Bender and Johnny McLaughlin out in uh, Denver, so we'll be keeping an eye on that game for you as well. Right here, it's 10-2. The Bullets off to a quick start. Aaron James against Dandridge. Goodrich, great shot. He Not had only a great position. shot, but a great move, too, because he, if he had turned around and put the ball to the floor, Beebe would have been on top of him like a splice water. All right, here's Hayes with Lenny Robinson on top. It's a 10 4 bullet lead over the Jazz. Kelly stole it away from Unsell. Here comes McElroy with the big E and a foul. So Elvin Hayes has drawn the foul. As we were saying, Pete Maravich, I'm sure, is uh, watching back in New Orleans, Mendy. You can see the speed of McElroy here as Elvin Hayes tries to catch up with him. McElroy went right under them and caused the free throws. I'll tell you, it's a good foul, though. As long as he doesn't make the field goal and give him a possible three-point play, you hold him to maybe one or maybe two. 10-5, and he made just one, so it was a good foul. Bullets lead by five, 10 to 5. We're going to try to talk to Pete uh, at halftime. Mendy's going to... Try to get him on the telephone, and we can discuss his situation when he's coming back. A foul on Aaron James over playing on Dandridge. You know, actually, this New Orleans club has done a great job. This is, you know, this club's only been in existence four years, and here they are battling for a playoff spot. They've done as well as any, any NBA expansion club. Bobby Dandridge, fine move by Aaron James, and James is going to have his hands full this afternoon if he gives him that kind of a shot. 12-5, the Bullets, McElroy. Rebound, Hayes, Bullets want to run today. Tommy Henderson, but the Jazz is back on defense. Watch that. Hayes from 20. Elvin Hayes, and the Bullets are hot, Mindy. Len Robinson can't give him that shot. Elvin's not taking the turnaround. He's not even posting down low. He's just coming outside, and Robinson's not going out to pick him up. 14-5, the Bullets by nine. Jazz standing around right now. No movement at all with the ball. Kelroy, quick move on Henderson. Tried to play it out to Lenny Robinson. And a foul against the Bullets. Lenny Robinson leads the league in rebounding. Pete Maravich uh, leads the league in scoring. Here's Aaron James. A good move. Nice give and go, Lenny Robinson. Good oh, that's basketball. Pretty, that's pretty. When you see that little give and go off the pick and roll, that's the basic play. We have seven and a half minutes to play in the first quarter here in Landover, Maryland. And the Bullets lead the Jazz 14 to 7. Jim oh. Carvelis, Mendy Rudolph. Bobby Dandridge and almost a steal, but Dandridge with the quick hands got it back. Greedy from 20. Bullets red hot. Bullets by nine. The thing that amazes me is that uh, Goodrich hasn't gotten into the game offensively. Here he goes. He forced that. Freebie's doing a good job on him. Henderson's tough to the hoop. He got his own rebound. What an effort. Rebound Kelly. James the other way, running two on two to Gail Goodrich against West. Great block, unsell. James with a basketball. McElroy, bullseye, and it's now a 16-9 game. Jazz down by seven. It's like the Jazz is a little more aggressive, Mendy, on defense now. They're playing the ball, a little overplay right now is what they need. 
Great play by Goodrich. That's a matchup the Bullets have to capitalize on. Oh, how's that? What happens when you penetrate? Bobby Dandridge took two players to him. Wes Hunsell with a little push shot. 18-9, the Bullets have doubled the score again. We have six minutes to play in the first quarter. The New Orleans Jazz and the Bullets battling for a wild card playoff spot. Here's Aaron James. Henderson knocked it away. I believe it was off a bullet last. It was. And Aaron James is uh, coming out of the ball game now. And he's replaced by Paul Griffin, number 30. Paul Griffin in for Aaron James. Kelly over Unsell. Rich Kelly. 18-11 now. The Bullets' lead is seven. Greedy. Doesn't need much range. He has great range, and he's playing off the left hand, which McElroy's got to remember. He's not right-handed, as most players are in the NBA. Now Goodrich trying to guard him. Now Goodrich finds himself free, and it's 2013. Goodrich trying to guard Greedy, and of course, he couldn't get through the unsell pick, but who can? No, <laughs> you can't get through that with a shovel. <laughs> Bullets, seven up. Playing well, Greavy on the baseline, gets it off to Dandridge. And there's Lenny Robinson asserting himself on the boards. Here's McElroy, they can cut it to five now. From 20, there's Rich Kelly with great position. And Lenny Robinson with an offensive board. And the league's leading rebounder makes it 20-15. Lenny Truck Robinson started his career right here. In fact, played his first pro game against the New Orleans Jazz as a rookie a couple of years ago. Good defense. Oh, good defense, good defense. Griffin, great defense. Now Goodrich. And look out, here comes the Jazz. It's 2017, they've cut it to three, Mendy. Defense will do it for you. Tough shot, Elvin Hayes. Probably as good a bank shot artist as anybody in the league. Amazing thing about E is no matter where he's at, back to the basket, whatever, he just knows where he's at all the time. Doesn't look like he does. He'll turn around. It looks like he's got radar. 22-17, Lenny Robinson. Unselled, holding Kelly off the boards. Bullets five up. Bullets seven. Elvin Hayes, hot shooting bullets today. 3.42 to play first quarter here in Landover. Eight for the Big E. Griffin, tough rebound. And Kelly tipped it in. Griffin's look pretty good out here. Not a lot of finesse, but a lot of hard work. And that's what offensive rebounding is all about. Hard work, dedication. 24-19 now. The Bullets in a high scoring first quarter, leading by five. Robinson and Hayes. There's the big E again. Goodrich, the smallest guy on the floor with the rebound. McElroy. And now it's 24-21. Again, the Jazz has cut it to three here with 2.54 to play in the first quarter. New Orleans a record 26 and 30, and the Bullets are 28 and 27. If they were to have the playoffs tomorrow, New Orleans would qualify as the last wild card team. Robinson with another rebound, Jimmy. All right, Jazz could cut it to one. McElroy. Dandridge, Bullets want to run a little bit. Now, let's see, did Griffin have the position there? No. Pretty close, man. All right, Dick Mono wants to talk it over. Mendy, let's take a look at this again. Let's take a look. He'll push him with his arms here, and there's the foul. Good call by Bobby Rakel. We have 222 to play, 24-21. Bullets up by three, Jimmy. I'm Tom T. Hall, here to tell you about Bonanza specials available on 1978 Chevy fleet side pickups. With this option package, Bonanza pickups are priced $350 less than if you ordered everything separately. It includes air conditioning, gauges, automatic transmission, power steering, comfort tilt wheels, special trim, and more. 
So get all the Bonanza facts now at participating Chevy dealers and bring your friends. Homeward Bound, coast of New England. The Navy. See your recruiter or call toll free. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. How can we stop the spread of pollution when even paving a mountain road contaminates once clear air? One answer, a water-based emulsified asphalt developed by the people of Phillips Petroleum that paves without pollution and uses 30% less petroleum than conventional asphalt, helping protect the environment while we make fine products for your car. That's performance from Phillips Petroleum, a performance company. Next Friday night at 11.30, CBS Sports presents live from Las Vegas, a boxing special with undefeated Ronnie Mazel Harris, the number one ranked challenger for the world middleweight title, taking on the second ranked contender, Gracia Antona. That's next Friday at 11.30 p.m. Eastern. All right, we want to welcome the fans. Here in Washington, uh, D.C., watching us uh, have the bullets and the jazz, a three-point bullet lead. And we have 2.22 to play in the first quarter. All right, Grieby. There's Dandridge. Griffin's done a good job on him. Uh, Grieby. Unsell. Unsell just out-muscled Kelly that time. That's one thing that Kelly has got to do is not so much go for the ball, Jim. What he's got to do is block Unsell out of there. Forget about the ball. The ball will come to you so long as you keep your player out of there. All right, Bullets now with a five-point lead. And it's 52 to play first quarter. All right, we want to welcome the fans uh, watching the Denver Boston Celtic game here in Landover, Maryland. Over the Bullets, it's 26-21 Bullets in the white uniforms, the Jazz in purple. And Larry Wright just in the ball game misses shot, and Kelly gets it off to Mikel Roy. Pete Maravich is not playing today, as most of you may know by now. He was injured uh, 31st of January, and Pete supposedly is going to get back in uh, shape in a couple weeks, uh, maybe start playing March 1st. And Bobby Dandridge got it down. 28-21 now, the Bullets' lead is seven. Against the Jazz here, big Central Division game. They're battling for wild card spots here in Washington this afternoon. Goodrich. The pass to McElroy and Wright got McElroy. So the Bullets have a seven-point lead here with a minute one to play in the first quarter in Washington. All right, McElroy, good block. Larry Wright got a piece of Boy, it. He then. jumped. I don't know how high he got off the floor. <laughs> Kelly doing a job on the boards, and now Elvin Hayes is fouling in the backcourt. Twenty-eight, twenty-one. The Bullets by seven with forty-seven seconds to play, first quarter. Goodrich, good foul shooter. Never fails to say that many. You had to jinx him, didn't you? Huh? <laughs> we'll get the penalty shot now. Bullets now with a five point lead. 45 seconds to play first quarter. better matchup as far as Jazz is concerned. Now they've got Wright and Goodrich to match up. Oh, what a move. Bobby Dandridge, poetry in motion. 30-23 now. The Bullets lead is seven over the Jazz with 23 seconds. Let's see if they play for the one shot, maybe. 
That'll look for Goodrich now, coming atop the key. Kilroy with right. And he got it. Six seconds, 30-25. Bullets by five. Dandridge with one second. There it goes. And that's the end of the first quarter here in Landover, Maryland, with a score of the Bullets, 30. The Jazz, 25. And I might say that the Jazz are lucky to be as close as they are. The Bullets really control that quarter. Heads are turning to Vitalis. Heads are turning. Pardon me. Can I give you a lift? Heads are turning to Vitalis. Hey! Heads are turning. Don't I know you from somewhere? Today's women are turning to men with shorter hair. That's why more men are turning to Vitalis for that clean together younger look. So use Vitalis and start some heads turning. Excuse me, is the seat taken? Heads are turning. These 1,700 one-gallon gas cans reach up to the highest suspension bridge in the world, demonstrating just one advantage of the new Chevy Chevette. If the car you drive now has an average EPA combined city highway mileage estimate of 17 miles to a gallon of gas, and you switch to a Chevy Chevette with its higher mileage, you might save up to this much gas, as much as 1,700 gallons over five years of normal driving. 1,700 gallons, enough to reach from the bottom of Royal Gorge to the bridge above and then some. This was one of the highlights of my career, being named most valuable player while the Celtics won the world championship last year. But another real thrill for me was visiting the Basketball Hall of Fame. From the Peach Basket to our great game today, our Hall of Fame places basketball greatest stories and glories. Why not join the thousands who are planning a visit to Basketball Hall of Fame, located on Springfield College campus in Springfield, Massachusetts? All right, there's Tiny, the bullet mascot. Actually, 15 years Chief Gentry has had this mascot. That mascot's as much a part of the bullet history as the red, white, and blue yeah, uniforms. I remember him back in Baltimore, too, Jimmy. Always around. A lot of fun with that little fool. All right, second quarter underway. The bullets lead by five. Agrivis against Goodrich the other way, and there's a misplay by New Orleans, a turnover. Here comes Larry Wright. To Unsell, nice pass. Nothing like penetration, I'll tell you. When you get a guard like little Larry Wright and get in that hole and just shovel off, you're going to get some kind of opportunity. Bullets by seven. Griffin, number 30, with the basketball. Bad pass, another turnover. That's two sloppy passes in a row for the Jazz. Now, the second quarter is a very important quarter in any basketball game. It's usually when the benches come off, it's usually when the game takes its shape. Larry Wright. Well, maybe more than anyone, uh, here's Greg Ballard in the game and a good pass from Wes Unsell. Unsell, one of the best passing centers in basketball. Well, Griffin had his head turned that time. Wes Unsell took advantage of him and just slipped the pass right by him. I'm going to say Larry Wright is kind of on both sides of the fence today. He plays for the Bullets and he played high school basketball here in uh, Washington, D.C., but he was born in Monroe, Louisiana. We know we got some people watching down there. And I'll tell you, Elgin Baylor, a native of Washington, D.C., does not like what's happened the last two times down. And he wants to stop and talk it over right now with his club down by nine and 11.06 to play in the first half. If you're looking for a new home, here's something to look for. Styrofoam brand insulation. Depending on conditions, it can save you up to 24% on your heating costs. It goes up easy and adds little to the cost of a new home. Your builder just installs it in place of ordinary sheathing, from roof line to frost line. Just ask for Styrofoam brand insulation, and you can look forward to energy savings, heating and air conditioning for the life of your new home. Mr. Highbloom? Huh? Ah, Mr. Highbloom. Yes? Yeah. We understand that you're taking a trip with us tomorrow. Trip? Yeah, well, we want you to know that Avis is working right now. Avis? It's vacuuming your car, checking the oil, oil, brakes, even the air and the spare tire. Spare tire. One of the ways Avis tries harder is working at night, so you're ready harder? in the morning. Yeah. Oh, by the way, it's a uh, Chrysler Cordoba, and it's blue. See you in the morning. See you in the morning. We try hard, Avis. Avis, we don't know another way. Each year, thousands of homes are lost to fire. 
That's why you need Allstate's homeowner's insurance. But did you know many other homes are lost to another major disaster? The owner dies before the mortgage is paid. For that, you need mortgage protection insurance from Allstate Life. Your family needs both kinds of protection, and your Allstate agent can put the two together. See him soon. Next Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern, Challenge of the Sexes features a golf challenge with George Burns taking on the women's U.S. Open champion, Hollis Stacy. A water ski jumping contest with talented Cindy Todd going against world record holder Wayne Grimditch. Plus a show jumping challenge. That's next Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern. 54 seconds into the second quarter, the Bullets have capitalized on a couple of uh, turnovers and up by nine. Now let's go to the Boston Denver Nugget game with Gary Bender, John McLaughlin. And for the fans that have just joined us here in Denver, as the Denver Nuggets are in white, the Boston Celtics in green. 10.28 to go as we have a delay in the action now and some changes. Paul Ellis, a rookie from Marquette, is coming in. Tom Lagarde is going to check out. The you Celtics know Bo Ellis very well. Yes, I do. Of course, he's had a knee problem, but he's played quite well for this club this year. The Celtics have made a good adjustment. They're getting back on defense much better than, than they did earlier in the first quarter. Stakem picked up now by Simpson and rejected. Havlicek comes up with it. Off to Kermit Washington. Blocked by Hillman. After Duff comes up with a block. Here's Robert Smith. Hillman again. Boy, they love him. He did it all. He blocked the shot. Actually, Kermit should have taken the jump shot. He had it wide open. Here you can see the block. He gets the ball out. Now watch. And then he gets in on the break. But watch the interior passing of the ball on the break. One pass right back to Darnell and dunk. Time is called at the 10.04 mark. Denver with a 37-32 lead. All right, welcome back to Washington, D.C. Jim Carvelis, Mendy Rudolph, our score now. The Bullets 36, the Jazz 25. Greg Ballard did a couple of foul shots while we were away, and the Bullets have an 11-point lead. Mendy, the second quarter here. Jazz just can't get it together. It's important for the Jazz because they've had three or four turnovers in a row right now, and the Bullets have capitalized on every one of them. McElroy made a nice block that time, uh, bothered the Grevy shot. Got some new people in the game. Joe Merriweather in the middle for the Jazz. Joe Pace for the Bullets. Lenny Robinson is charging. Oh, oh. What a collision. <laughs> he took two of them out of there. Woo! Great, look, great looking tight end, Mendy. <laughs> Lenny Robinson, one of releases, wacko one and wacko two. <laughs> There's a lot of weight on that floor. All right, we're back to the live action, and now Greavy and Slick Watts is in the game on him. Merriweather on pace, in to Greavy. He's walking, dragged the pivot foot. Let's set these lineups for you now. Hayes is still in there, and pace, and Greg Ballard up front for the Bullets. Back line now, CJ, Charlie Johnson comes in for Greavy. He's on the back line with Wright. Slick Watts and Goodrich back line for the Jazz. Merriweather up front with Lenny Robinson, and Aaron James, who's back in now for Griffin. Lenny Robinson on top. By the way, Lenny now has two fouls after the charge. Goodrich, 36-27, and no one said he couldn't shoot. Not as quick as he used to be, but he still has that beautiful, soft touch. All right, Larry right now against Goodrich. Now, Gale is not the greatest defensive player in the world. Let's see if uh, Wright tries to go with him. Hayes, hey, oh, about that. Hey, when he decides to put it up, he doesn't care where he is at the floor. He knows where the basket is, and it's going up. Well, it's now by 11. They shot 66% in the first quarter and still uh, only led by five, as many said. Jazz were lucky to stay that close as Slick Watts banks it in. 38-29. You never have to worry about spotting Slick Watts. You don't have to check the number. Of course, the number is nothing anyway. Double zero. Here's Hayes. Oh. Hayes has hit two of the toughest shots you'll ever see. 12 for the Big E, and the bullet lead is 11 with eight and a half minutes to play in the first half. Robinson knocked over Charlie Johnson. Goodrich, 25 feet away. Now what Robinson's trying to do now is match the E's performance as far as 
field goals are concerned. And he's forcing up a lot of shots. Elvin right now is taking advantage of Robinson's attempt to overplay him on defense and is having a field day. 14 for the Big E, and the bullet lead is 11 points. A hot shooting bullets here today, but we have a lot of time to go in this one. Watch Joe Merriweather. Nice move, but he didn't get it down. Bullets running. Larry Wright. Oh. 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 He faked Gail Goodrich just right out of his shoe top. They love it here in Landover, Maryland, and the bullets are shooting hot. They've gone up by 13 points. Watch this, Jimmy. You'll see this little shovel pass fake. Gail Goodrich will go for it, and nobody there. See what's new today. Introducing the third generation Monte Carlo. The third generation of a highly successful personal luxury car. Its highly original styling opens new dimensions in affordable luxury and in comfort. With more rear seat headroom, legroom, and hip room than last year's Monte Carlo. The third generation Monte Carlo. Drive it and put a little distance between yourself and the crowd. Up here, the wind can turn an entire ski slope into one big snowdrift. But you're going to take the mountain away from the storm and give it back to the skiers. Now comes Miller time. Time to head for the best tasting beer you can find. America's quality beer, Miller High Life. If you got the time, if you got the time, we got the beer. And my reputation rides on Delco shock absorbers. Because you never know when you're going to need Delco's smooth control. <laughs> when the road is curved and rough, you need the shock that's tough. You can trust Delco. Thanks, Delco. Delco shocks and batteries. Delco shocks and batteries. Thanks, Delco. I didn't kill my girls. Right. Mother, lover, or murderer? That is the question of guilt. Tuesday at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. All right, Pete Maravich is watching today's game uh, in New Orleans, along with a lot of other New Orleans fans, and Mendy Rudolph's going to be talking to him live on the telephone at halftime, get Pete's impressions of the first half, and also find out how serious that injury is and when he expects to be back. And looking forward to that. The interview as well as Pete getting back. Here's Slick Watts. Goodrich, nice move. Gail Goodrich, great move that time. He just throws Mr. Ballard. And now Ballard, well, it's finally misses a shot. It's hard to believe. 44-33, the Jazz down by 11. Slick Watts. Now that's a bad shot. It might go in, but it's a bad shot. The Jazz cannot win that way. They've got to penetrate to the hoop. Now the Bullets' lead is nine. That's two for two for Slick Watts since he came in the game. Slick's not in there to score as much as he is to play some defense and also to get the club moving. Pace walk. Joe Pace took an extra stride. Many, it's interesting, speaking of Pete Maravich, uh, he's been there since the inception of the franchise in New Orleans and, of course, playing at LSU. He was uh, really the known basketball player in the state. But since he's as when he's been healthy in the four years, as you watch Watts having it knocked away and being fouled by Pace, when Pete's been healthy, they've been a 500 club, 91 and 91, when Pete Maravich was available. Watch Slick Watts, now he'll penetrate to the hoop, come right on top of the ball, there it is, caught the right hand as he went up to the hoop. All right, 44 36 now. Bobby Dandridge is going to come in the ball game now, replacing Greg Ballard. A good shot of Slick Watts. Got him from Seattle. Slick scored six points as he's come in, so he's done a good job for Elgin Baylor. Here's Bobby Dandridge. This matchup will be with he and James. And now Wright is fouled, and Bob Rakel says in the act of shooting. Well, I don't think we've mentioned the referees many. I can't believe we've. Uh, Bobby Rakel and Daryl Garrison, right. two of the best in the league. They're doing a good job so far today. As they always do, Jim. Larry Wright gets a couple. I'm going to forget. Uh, oh, they do do a great job. No problem. Larry Wright was drafted last year with Mitch Kupchak. Well, it's had two picks in that first round.
All right, score now, 45-37, bullets by eight. We have 6.33 to play in the first half. Another big game going on that we're gonna be checking with from time to time as Goodrich gets it down again. That's Denver and Boston. That's a big game for both clubs. No doubt, we're getting to that point in the season, Mendy, now, last third of the season where all these games are important for wild card slots, divisional championships. We're getting down to the nitty gritty in the NBA. C.J. Johnson, does it count? Yes, it does. Look, Watts tried to double team, just caught the wrist as he went up, and C.J. Johnson will make the field goal, pick this up. Slick Watts will help, just catches him on the arm, enough to call the foul, a three-point play. Charlie Johnson, 48-39, the bullet lead is nine. C.J. was signed a couple of weeks ago when the bullets were riddled with injuries, the Chenier injury and everything, they needed a guard. Henderson was hurt, Grevy, and uh, signed a contract with him. Slick Watts, what a great block by Hayes. And this is not gonna count, Aaron James they said he interfered with the ball on the rim. I question it. I think the ball was off the ring. Now, let's take a good look. You got to watch the hand and watch the ball. In my opinion, I think the hand was not on the ring, nor was the ball. Watch it now. Yep, the ball was off the ring, and it should have been a field goal, in my opinion. 48-39. Call it like it is, Mendy. Here's right. Slick Watts does a good job on it. CJ, Charlie Johnson, with five and a half minutes to play in the first half and the Bullets leading by nine. Here's Dandridge and Aaron James. They've been battling all day. Good fate, Larry Wright. Slick Watts almost went into section four on that fate. One of the things you don't want to do is leave your feet because when you do, you're vulnerable and the player who you're playing can do anything he wants thereafter. Merriweather and Unsell on top. Here's Slick Watts. Hello, hello. And Bobby Dandridge a rebound and a release to Larry Wright, the quick little guard. Bullets lead by 11. Bullets play 17 of their next 27 games right here. Bobby Dandridge, what a block by Merriweather, blocks it to McElroy, brings it under control. Great block by Merriweather, good job by McElroy and Mendy to keep it under control. Well, the thing that's nice about the block, Jim, is that you keep the ball in play. A lot of guys will block shots and knock it out of bounds. Doesn't do anybody any good. Look at Unsell on the release, but it's tipped by Watson to Big E. Foul. But that's a good foul. That's an automatic two points. He's got to foul him there, Mendy. That's what we talked about earlier. If you're going to foul somebody, go into the hoop for a field goal and just make darn sure he doesn't make it. Elk, the greatest foul shooter in the world. He's shooting about 60%. And look at this score. Boston hanging tough. No doubt about it, the Celtics have an outside shot for a playoff spot. Seems that ever, ever since John Havlicek announced his retirement, they've been a little bit inspired right now. All right, Elvin, who's only been shooting about 50% from the foul line, hit the bottom of the net. Slick Watts has three fouls, by the way. Ah! He's got one out of two, so he keeps his 50% going. 428 to play in the first half. The bullet lead is a dozen, 51-39. Jim Carvelis and Mendy Rudolph land over Maryland. Lenny Robinson against Wes Unsell. A couple of big guys, and now a three-second violation. I believe it was Slick Watts that was in that lane. Well, Lenny Robinson looked desperately for somebody to cut through the passing lane. Nobody did. He got trapped with the ball, but of course, everybody stopped moving. All right, Watts made the steal. Now on a three-on-one, McElroy to Merriweather. Nice pass. No doubt about it. Good pass, good play, good hustle. Well, it's by 10. The Big E is hot. Oh, man. Unsell. I'll tell you what, Sunsell just took Merriweather and bodied him out of there. I thought there should have been an offensive foul call on that play, possibly. Sunsell's got 10 points. Merriweather's going to go with a 17-footer. Nice touch. Joe Merriweather over Wes Unsell. 53-43. Bullets still by 10 with 3.34 to play in the first half. Okay. We've got a foul against Aaron Orleans. James uh, trying to deny Dandridge the position on the court. They're in the penalty situation. A foolish foul at that point. Dandridge was going no place. There was no ball movement. No sense to give up a possible two points for that. Aaron James, second foul. Bobby Dandridge with two. 
Elgin Baylor, a native of Washington, D.C., one of the greatest players to ever play the game. Pound for pound, I think he was possibly the greatest player that ever played the game. Old number 22, how many games I saw him in, what performances he used to put out. Bobby Danvich got a good roll both times. The Bullets lead by a dozen again with 324 to play in the first half. Here's Lenny Robinson checking McElroy, and uh, he's fouled. Bobby Danvich got him. Well, the Jazz have a lot of home games coming up too many, so they're going to have a chance. Uh, they can get Pete back in in March and play a lot of those home games. They have a shot at the playoffs. McElroy, long shot. Merriweather and a block by Hayes. Boy, Elvin's playing well, isn't he, Mandy? I'll tell you, when things go right, they go right. Good block, good defense, good ball movement, good shooting. Well, it's biggest lead of the game, 14 points, 57-43. Good position. Now, Danvers made a great defensive play that time. We'll watch this block on Elvin Hayes, how well he timed this shot. Merriweather was at the top, and Elvin Hayes just blocked the ball beautifully. Clean, and that takes a lot of good timing. You've got to make sure that you don't go up too fast, you don't go up too soon, and Elvin Hayes is doing it all right now here in the first half. This smelly onion and scope showed something new about fighting bad breath to these users of the leading antiseptic. Scope mouthwash in this dish. And I'm going to ask you each to smell of something. It smells kind of mini. Your mouthwash with the other half of this onion. What's it smell like to you? A medicine they smell. Scope smells good. If it can make uh, onion smell this good, you imagine what it can do for your breath. Scope fights bad breath. Scope doesn't give medicine breath. Whatever you do, that look just comes through. It's confidence. Confidence. Millions of people each day help keep themselves dry the sure way. Take off your coat, America. Take off your coat to show. Sure keeps me so dry, I can take off confidence. Most sprays go on wet and oily. Sure goes on dry and helps keep me dry all day. Take off your coat to show. See what's new today. The new Monza by Chevrolet. For a car so sporty and so well equipped, it's priced surprisingly low. Next Sunday, CBS Sports presents NBA regional action with Milwaukee taking on New Orleans, Philadelphia going against Seattle, Portland tangling with Chicago, and Boston against the New Jersey Nets. That's NBA regional action next Sunday. And there's Dick Motter with his back to us right now, with blue shirt hanging over the gray jacket. Man who came from Chicago leads the NBA coaches right now. Would you believe in victories? 432. Another point about that, Jim. Motter was named coach of the year in 1971. Since that time, however, there's been four coaches of the year that aren't around anymore. Johnson, <laughs> Heinsohn, Ray Scott, and Red Holtzman. So maybe that coach of the year is a jink of some kind. <laughs> All right, Larry right with the basketball. Good pick from Munsell. Now he looked for Wes. He wasn't rolling, but Hayes was, and Hayes is traveling. Bullet front court is really out muscled New Orleans, Mendy. Bullets uh, outscoring uh, the New Orleans front line 39 to 14. Let me tell you something about that Bullets front court, all right? It's the oldest front court in the league. Would you believe it? In experience, Unseld, Hayes, and Danvers all combined have more years than anybody else in the entire NBA. And they're playing like a very good experience front line this afternoon. Here's Lenny Robinson. He's been held to six points. That's been a big key in this game. McElroy right into Unseld. What a great defensive play by Wes. CJ running a three on two break. Larry Wright. And the Bullets are doing it. 59 to 43 by 16 over the Jazz. Giving the Jazz one shot, blocking an awful lot of shots, forcing them into a lot of perimeter shooting as we just saw. And that's not the way you beat the Bullets. Lenny Robinson now has eight points. Bullets lead is 14. Bobby Dandridge. And Lenny Robinson with another rebound. Here's Goodrich against CJ. 
Dale. Nice pass. Gilroy just blew it. That's about the fourth shot they've had their hands on out. Hayes has been red hot. Merriweather a rebound. Now the Jazz want to run. They're running three on three. Griffin is walking with the ball. Trying to get it back to the trailer. Lenny Robinson. 59-45. Stay tuned at halftime. Mendy will be talking live on the telephone to Pete Maravich in New Orleans. We talked to Elgin before the game, and he feels that a good thing uh, if, if Pete can get out there is Pete's always in shape, he says. And it's not going to take much to get him back in there. All right, that's a backcourt violation, and it goes over to the Jazz. Now, the Bullets have cup check out. He's been out for three weeks or so uh, with a bad thumb and he was running before the game today he ought to be back by March 1st Mitch Kupchak well Jim Baylor said does more damage against his club than any other bullet and Griffin gets it down from 15 on the right baseline to make it 59 47 so the bullet lead has now been cut to 12 with 45 seconds to play in the first half I got a lot of time to go many this could still develop into a game uh, 10 or 12 point lead at halftime is nothing in this league He's missing on sell on the loose ball. He's not going to get two here. It'll be a one shot foul, so he's going to be at the line. There's that cast you see on Mitch Cutter's right hand. We talked to the doctor before the game, and it was a completely severed ligament. They had to tie together, and he'll be back in a couple of weeks. One thing you got to do with Unsell, a lot of ball players just do not do. I mentioned it earlier in the telecast, Jim, is they go for that ball when they're on the defensive boards instead of blocking Wes Unsell out of there. The ball will come to you. Just get his body out of there. That's all. Now how do you do that? Just stand still, call an <laughs> offensive foul, do anything. Dig a hole for yourself, but do it. All right, here's Goodrich. What a great shot by Gail Goodrich. That's shades of Pete Maravich. 60-49 now. The bullet lead is 11 points with 19 seconds. And they're looking for the one shot. Well, Elvin's been hot. He's missed his last three or four shots. Now, let's see who they're going to go to for the last shot. Down to seven seconds. All right, start moving it. They better hustle up now. Try to get Dandridge off the screen. Johnson, he can't do it much better than that. And the Bullets cap off an outstanding half here. For a report on the Boston Celtic Denver Duggett game, Gary Bender, John McLaughlin in Denver. Welcome to the fans that have joined us here in Denver. The Denver Nuggets in the white uniforms. The Boston Celtics in the green. Our score here, Boston 58, Denver 49 with 2.01 remaining now in this first half of play. 22 seconds on the shot clock, and we have a 20-second injury timeout now for Sidney Wicks. Sidney, uh, he apparently hurt his hand. As you look at Dan Issel here, he's working pretty hard today. He's really a key to this club. They have so many great players, but when he's going well, they win. The story here has been Denver jumping up about 10 to 12 points. We're going to see the Celtics come fighting back to climb within two to four. Now they're down by seven, 58 to 49. They're playing without Dave Cowens, who has a lower back problem. And here is Wicks driving in. Bobby Jones with the rebound off to Issel. Issel playing very hard this afternoon. Bobby Wilkerson, who has seven assists already in this game, started him out on the right track. Look it up by Ernie D. He has two steals now, the last two times down the floor. Going to try another shot, and he got one to go. Well, that's in the land of the Giants. I don't know how he got that off. He had a number of people in on the break, and he just didn't give it up, decided to keep it himself. Well, he missed one just a moment ago on that very same play, and that's now 58-51. Wilkerson out to Ralph Simpson. Bobby Jones. Jones. Against Maxwell, and Maxwell comes down with a rebound out to Ernie D. And the Celtics coming right back in this game again. Cheney's got it. Somebody lost his shoe. It's Cheney. He's lost his shoe. Out it comes to Dave Bing. And all of a sudden, John McLaughlin, it's a 58-53 game. Look at Dave Bing trying to get back to cover. Now, he shouldn't have had to do that. That's right. Bing was on the offensive end and that's trying right. to get back defensively. Heads up play by Bing, but he commits the foul. Well, and that's what's hurt the Celtics. Uh, Denver continues to run the break. They're getting out, and that's how they keep opening up the lead that they do open. 58-53 with 50 seconds to go here in the second period of play.
Welcome back to Washington. Jim Carvelis, Mendy Rudolph. We're at halftime here. And the Bullets lead the Jazz by 13, 62-49. Mendy, a great last shot uh, by the Bullets there. And it was their kind of half, as we saw with the last well, shot. Everybody, everybody looked for Bobby Dandridge to come off a baseline pick there. You'll see him come screening around. Gail Goodrich will leave his man, pick up Dandridge, and there he goes, all by himself, field goal. All right, we have a great horse competition set up for you in a moment here at halftime, so stay tuned to the NBA on CBS. Fred, you're getting married. You gotta look great, so stop shaving. It's better to get stroked in the morning. The Big Shaver? The Big Shaver is so responsive, it doesn't shave you, it strokes you. I'm gonna get stroked like this every morning. And the Big Shaver's cheaper than blades, yet it's a blade and handle in one. Fred, marriage agrees with you. Well, he really got stroked this morning. The Big Shaver, lots of great shaves from just one Big Shaver. Then it's time for the next. So don't shave, get stroked in the morning. Hertz knows to keep your business, they've got to give you the fastest possible service. And to do that means adding more people behind counters where and when you need them. More new cars where you need them. Opening more locations where you need them. Next time you need a car, wherever, whenever, come to the one with more cars, more locations, more people to serve you fast. Rent a Ford or other fine car from Hertz. The superstar in rent a car. You know it. If I were shopping around for life insurance myself, and, and if I knew what I know as a, as a life insurance agent for State Farm, I'd buy it from State Farm. And, and I really mean that because I know what we as agents feel our job is uh, toward our clients, and I know how our company feels about it. And like a good neighbor, State Farm. Hi, everyone. I'm Don Cricky, and this year at halftime on CBS coverage of NBA basketball, we have some of the top players in the league matched up in the old schoolyard game of horse, where a player must duplicate his opponent's shots or be assessed a penalty letter. Five misses means five letters. That spells horse, and he's out. A couple of former Carolina Tar Heels matched today, Bob McAdoo and Charlie Scott, and with the rules, here's Mendy Rudolph. The basic rules of horse are as follows. The player in control must describe his shot beforehand. Now, two consecutive shots from the same area are not allowed unless someone moves at least five feet away. There are trick shots allowed. However, the same trick shot cannot be attempted more than once in the contest. The flip of the coin will determine who goes first. Now, there's going to be disputes out there, and if there are, my word will be the final judge. Right here. McAdoo, who leads the Knicks in scoring, has won the toss and he'll lead away. Okay, Bob. A backboard little push shot, Charlie. H for Scott. Charlie gets himself a letter to his dismay. McAdoo's going to try a left-hand backboard shot. And he misses. Now Charlie Scott has the advantage. And let's see if he pushes McAdoo away from the basket, which you're going to do, Charlie, right? Uh, 20 foot, 25 foot jump shot. A 25 foot jump shot. And he missed. The advantage is back to McAdoo. Backboard. And missed. Moving shot to the right. I gotta ask you something here, Charlie. Hold on now. Hold on. Hold on. Just a minute now. It seems to me that every time you sort of get the advantage, you take McAdoo away from the hoop. Is that right? Well, big guys can't breathe out here. You can't breathe out here. <laughs> Go ahead. A moving. No, a, no, moving. a moving. A moving jump shot to the right. A moving. <laughs> a moving. <laughs> okay. Charlie Scott in a Celtic uniform here, but he's since been traded to the Lakers. And made under pressure. Not Time out. Time out. Out. No. What you going to ask? No, we got to distinguish between moving and slow motion. Well, that was moving, but it was not as fast as you, but it was moving. <laughs> okay. That shot. That shot. Further away from the hoop. H for McAdoo. So they're even up at a letter apiece. That slow motion shit. Moving shot to the right with speed and pace. With speed and pace, but missed. 
Like it who comes in tighter to the hoop. Left hand backboard. Give me the left hand. Scott can't get it to work, so McAdoo is in the lead. McAdoo has the advantage and calls the shot. Straight ahead. The swisher. Nothing to it. Oh, yeah, there is, and says Charlie Scott. R for Scott. Getting pressure. Three letters to one with Three the big shot. guy from the Knicks in the lead. And the door is open for Charlie Scott. Moving to the left, jumper. Moving to the left and a jumper. Made. Tough shot for McAdoo to follow. But made right jump shot. And made. Uh, hold, now, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Mac. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Get out there. Now hold on. Take at least two, now. three dribbles you know, right and take the shot. Just like that. Man. That's the way. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's the way. Uh, we gotta get some pace on this, brother. The ball's gotta be released from in here. <laughs> you start your dribble out there mm -hmm. someplace. Okay. I'm gonna call a letter again. These two guys were working on each other well before they played, trying to psych it out. And a letter against McAdoo brings it to H.O. You're ready, Charlie. Left moving jump shot. McAdoo with the door open. Coming in tight. <laughs> Left hand. Hey, hold on. Let's go to the same spot. Go to the same spot. That's not a trick shot. Left hand bank. Left handed bank. I thought you allowed hand. one trick shot a game. You don't have to, but you can. You can do more than one? Yes, you can. Left hand's not working for Charlie Scott, and Big Mac now has four letters up on him. I want a trick shot. You're going to try a trick shot? Yeah. Handle with this trick shot. He's this. Those left hand shot wasn't tricks. And miss. Left the door open for Scott. Well, I ain't gonna miss no more on you. <laughs> <laughs> right hand paint. And made. McAdoo usually going gets left. well on that shot. That's his number. No, but now there's right. three letters up on McAdoo. Change his mind. Are we going left or right, Charlie? Right. He's going right. Left the door open for Mac now. Watch well, you go for that layup. <laughs> Scott, as you see, is a letter from elimination. Left hand shot. Left hand shot. Oh, and made. How's that left hand, Scotty? Weak. <laughs> Get that left hand moving. <laughs> Big Mac gets rid of his former Carolina teammate, Charlie Scott. So McAdoo advances here at the Omni International Complex in Atlanta. Mac, there you go. You're about the first round. Uh, you gave me a little easy push shot. I know Charlie's weak with his left hand. Well, you've long been the best outside shooting big man in the league, but you stayed close. As he was saying, hey, you can't get that good air outside. You like it in about... Well, I'm a good outside shooter from, you know, 15, 10 feet. Charlie was shooting from 30 feet, and I'm not that accurate from out there. Well, you advance. Congratulations, Bob. All right, thank you very much. Join us on the horse competition next week when you'll see Paul Westfall go against Lionel Hollins. The NBA on CBS will return after this word from your local station. See the heart-rending drama of a mentally retarded boy and his moment of triumph. Special Olympics, Wednesday night on CBS. And so we're from Denver watching uh, the Denver-Boston Celtic game. We're here in Washington, D.C. in the Jazz. Get the first hoop of the second half. Jim Carvelis along with Mendy Rudolph. The Jazz in the purple uniforms, the bullets in white. The score now, bullets 62, the Jazz 51. Jazz playing without Pistol Pete Maravich, and he won't play for a couple of weeks. Elvin Hayes, he's been tough today at 15 in the first half. He now has 17 points, and Mendy Elvin's been great the last six or seven games for the Bullets. He's 8 for 12 right now in the ball game, and doing a real tough job on Len Robinson. Has really proved him ineffective so far in the ball game. 
Kelly out to Goodrich. Goodrich has been the big man for the Jazz. He's had 18 points in the first half. Aaron James unselled a rebound, 64-51. The Bullets lead by 13. Both these clubs going for a wild card spot as they battle in the Eastern Conference and specifically the Central Division. Grevy is fouled in the act of shooting. Grevy will come across the center. Now watch this. Underneath, there's the foul with the body and a two-shot trap. Well, it's by 13. Grevy gets another chance, bottom of the net. That's an unusual way to get a three-point play. The Bullets controlling the boards, and when you do that and give them an opportunity, they're going to burn you. Bullets by 16 now. Gail Goodrich, boy, he's really in trouble. Unsell in front of him, Grevy on the side. McElroy, ah! tough shot from the baseline. Unsell tips the ball. Still a loose ball. Grevy has a good release to Henderson now. He's got Hayes behind him. Elvin. Crowd on, I'll tell you. A little fancy behind the back pass. Beautiful jump shot by Elvin Hayes. Great ball movement, Jim. Jim. And a foul against Wes Unsell. Elvin Hayes, 19 points. Of course, uh, got people down in Houston watching this game today. They remember the Big E, his great college career down there, and of course playing with the Houston Rockets. The Big E, Elvin Hayes. Speaking of huge fans uh, are from Denver watching uh, the Denver-Boston Celtic game. We're here in Washington, D.C. and the Jazz get the first hoop of the second half. Jim Carvellis along with Mendy Rudolph, the Jazz in the purple uniforms, the Bullets in white. The score now, Bullets 62, the Jazz 51. Jazz playing without pistol Pete Maravich, and he won't play for a couple of weeks. Elvin Hayes, he's been tough today. At 15 in the first half, he now has 17 points. And Mendy Elvin's been great the last six or seven games for the Bullets. He's eight for 12 right now in the ball game and doing a real tough job on Len Robinson. Has really proved him ineffective so far in the ball game. Kelly out to Goodrich. Goodrich has been the big man for the Jazz. He's had 18 points in the first half. Aaron James unselled a rebound, 64-51. The Bullets lead by 13. Both these clubs going for a wild card spot as they battle in the Eastern Conference and specifically the Central Division. Grevy is fouled in the act of shooting. Uh, Grevy will come across the center. Now watch this. Underneath, there's the foul with the body and a two-shot trap. Well, it's by 13. Grevy gets another chance, bottom of the net. That's an unusual way to get a three-point play. The Bullets controlling the boards, and when you do that and give them an opportunity, they're going to burn you. Bullets by 16 now. Gail Goodrich, boy, he's really in trouble. Unsell in front of him, Grevy on the side. McElroy, ah! tough shot from the baseline. Unsell tips the ball. Still a loose ball. Grevy has a good release to Henderson now. He's got Hayes behind him. Elvin. crowd on I'll tell you a little fancy behind the back pass beautiful jump shot by Elvin Hayes great ball movement Jim and a foul against Wes Unsell Elvin Hayes 19 points or so uh, got people down in Houston watching this game today they remember the Big E his great college career down there and of course playing with the Houston Rockets the Big E Elvin Hayes Speaking of Houston, Mendy, they come on a little bit lately. They're in that wild card picture. Houston Rockets. No right. one's out of it. I'll tell you, in this Central Division, anything can happen. 
Kelly with a pair to make it 69 to 53. And when you're talking about NBA in the state of Texas, what about those San Antonio Spurs? What a great season that they've come up with. Doug Moe doing a tremendous job with that club also. Keenan and Gervin with a great all-around ball club. Terrific job. They're going to be tough in the playoffs. Bobby Dandridge. Kelly with a rebound. Jazz 16 down, and Goodrich now has 20 points. Gail Goodrich, 69 to 55. The bullet lead is 14 with 9.27 to play in the third period. Rebound lost by Len Robinson, but Sawyer and James with it. Kelly. Offensive foul, they say Unsell that position. Kelly doesn't believe that. You'll notice what Unsell did on that play, Jimmy. He cut off the baseline, and that's what you got to do on defense. Once Unsell now, he'll cut the baseline off, force Kelly the other way, and it causes the offensive foul. That's what you've got to do. Cut the baseline right out. See what's new today. Last spring, 227 specially equipped Chevy Nova police cars were delivered to the Jacksonville, Florida Sheriff's Department. Now, that's a tall order, but no surprise, because law enforcement agencies in 47 states have made Chevy Nova America's best-selling police compact. Now, a lot of the things the police look for in a new car are the same things you'd look for in a new car. Reliability, performance, and value. Chevy Nova, a wanted car, now more than ever. What are more people using to help their cars last? Quaker State Motor Oil. Shoot, Quaker State. Hey, Quaker State. Quaker, Quaker State. State. What are more people using to help them avoid expensive engine repairs? Quaker State. Quaker State. What else? Quaker State. Quaker State. Quaker State helps cars last. Maybe that's why Quaker State's the best-selling motor oil in America. Favorites, Monday, see all of yours, the ones you pick from television and movies on the People's Choice Awards, Monday at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. There he is, the captain of the bullets, Wes Unsell, what a mountain of a man he is. A little trivia here for you, Jimmy. Wes Unsell was only the second player in the NBA to be named Rookie of the Year and the same year Most Valuable Player of the Year. That was Kareem in 68, 69, wrong. Am I wrong? The other player was Will Chamberlain. Jabbar was not rookie of the year, most valuable player? It was Chamberlain. Are you sure, Mendy? Yes, sir. We're even now, because you owe me a cup of coffee from that Borg. Uh, Connors match, Connors right. match, right. Bobby Danridge. Bullets shooting as well as they have in a long time. 71-55. They lead the Jazz by 16. Speaking of Houston, Jaime Perlow, the director of community relations for the Bullets, is in Houston watching the game. He called us at halftime, enjoying it. Well, why wouldn't he be? The Bullets are really playing hot. 71-57 now. Rich Kelly got it down. Bullets 14 up. 8.34 to play, third period. Got some halftime scores here. We'll pass along in just a moment. Seattle and Milwaukee playing this afternoon. Elvin. Now look like he got in the bottom of the net. He did. Chuck Robinson did everything right, everything you're supposed to do on defense, crowd him, force him to take a bad shot, and Elvin Hayes converted. When you're hot, you're hot. That's got to be discouraging for a defensive player, Mendy. When you play a guy as good as you can play him, he still makes it. It's got to kill you. Take the guts right out of you. Elvin's got 21 points. Goodrich, he's got 20. McElroy from 20. 73-59. This youngster McElroy played very well in that 10-game winning streak, but he was coming off the bench for Elgin Baylor. He's a youngster, third year in the league. Elgin likes him, though. Thinks he has a lot of potential. I don't know how Elvin even got that up on the board, but Lenny Robinson got his hand. Three on Robinson. Robinson does everything to attempt to block this shot. Watch this, Jimmy. Of course, he'll catch Elvin on the haze. On any arm. Elvin Hayes is getting some tough, tough points from Chuck Robinson. That's a different style of foul shooting for Elvin. I never saw him take aim like that before. I've never seen him in his career shoot free throws as badly as he shot him this year. 
No, shooting free throws is, is mental as well, man. A lot of concentration, too. A lot of confidence. It's like putting on a golf That's course. That's right. 74-59. A bullet lead is 15. Aaron James Goodrich is taking Greeby inside. Can you believe that? Goodrich <laughs> taking Greeby in the low post. Try yeah. anything if it works. Goodrich down on the low post. A very, very unusual play for him. He'll usually take somebody his own size down there and throws the left-handed hook in with a three-point play possibility. Goodrich is keeping him in the ball game here, Jim. No doubt about it. 23 for Gale, and it's a 12-point bullet lead. This game is still far from being over. With seven and a half minutes to play in the first half. Henderson unselled. Henderson, not a great shooter. Lenny Robinson on the boards. Good release to McElroy. Kind of a broken field, no real advantage. And now the foul is going to be on Dandridge for blocking. That's Dandridge what they blocking. need. That's what they need. A little drive to the hoop, a little, a little pizzazz out there. Create some situations. Go. When, when, when these things start to happen, when you start penetrating, you're going to have pick up fouls or convert free throws. Aaron James, and here come the Jazz. Now it's a 10 point game. 74 64 with 706 to play in the third period. The bullet lead has been dwindling here in the last couple of minutes. Kelly over the shoulder on Unsell. No question about that call. Rich Kelly just overplayed his man too much. An obvious call. What the Jazz need here are a couple of turnovers. Real, real bad. Three. Bobby Dandridge. You see why Dandridge's shot is so difficult to block. He'll pick it up from the top of his head and almost hide it behind his skull, and he'll let it fly from there. That time, Robinson got into no man's land. He traveled with the ball, Henderson. A little dipsy doodle that didn't turn out. It would have been pretty if he'd have converted. Well, the Jazz are coming back. They're down by a dozen. 6.42 to play in the third period. We got a lot of basketball coming from the Capitol Center here in Landover, Maryland, as the Jazz try to get that wild card spot. Yeah, yeah, Buck. I just went to another bar and asked for light beer for Miller. Yeah. They said, sorry, Buck, we don't have it. No. I don't want some beer that's going to fill me up. No. I want light. Tastes great, right. has a third less calories than a regular beer, yeah. and man, it's less filling. <laughs> you think I'm going to the other bar again? No, no way. From now on, the buck stops here. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. It's a fresh new slice of apple pie from Chevrolet Team. A fresh new slice of apple pie from Chevy Malibu. We saw you coming, America, and here we are with a new mid-size Malibu wagon designed to carry you well into the years ahead. With mileage estimates no other mid-size six-cylinder wagon can top, with all kinds of room inside, plus a smart new look that's not going to go unnoticed. A fresh new size of Apple by called Chevy Malibu. At your Chevrolet wagon stop now. Ribbit, ribbit. You know, I think I liked you better as a frog. As a frog, you had a much smoother face. Prince, didn't you ever hear Palm Olive Rapid Shave? While you were away, they improved it. Palm Olive Rapid Shave is thicker and lusher than ever. Feels good while you shave. Feels good after. Improved Palm Olive Rapid Shave in three refreshing fragrances. And now Irish Spring Fragrance, too. What do you say now, Prince? Ribbit. Next Saturday and Sunday, CBS Sports presents the Jackie Gleason Inverary Classic with Jack Nicklaus defending his title against a standout field. That's the final rounds of the Jackie Gleason Inverary Classic next Saturday and Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Bullets by a dozen over the Jazz with 6.42 to play in the third period here at the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland. Jim Carvelis, Mendy Rudolph. All right, the Denver Nuggets now with an eight-point lead over the Celtics in Denver. And Milwaukee, Seattle, it's Milwaukee 57, Seattle 52, that game at halftime. Lenny Robinson. And again, it's a 10-point bullet lead. Len Robinson now has 10 points. Henderson, Dandridge, Hayes, Unsell, Greeby with the bullets. And we got a foul on Greeby, a loose ball foul. Hot Rod Hundley, voice of the Jazz here doing the game back home. 
And uh, I didn't know that Hot Rod knew Mendy that well. I said, I want you to meet Mendy. He says, I know Mendy Rudolph. He gave me my first technical foul in the NBA. <laughs> I didn't remember, but he did well. <laughs> he never forgot the 25 bucks. Jazz are getting back here now a little bit, Jim. It's an eight-point game now, Mendy. Henderson walking right to the hoop. 78-68. That's Henderson's strong suit, man. He's really strong going to the basket. Not very effective as a jump shooter. Has a very bad range. In fact, a poor percentage shooter. Robinson and Hayes. McElroy from 20. Notice how the Bullets are doing such a tremendous job of keeping the Jazz away from the hoop and away from driving, forcing them into perimeter shooting shots they just don't want to take. Nice pass. Greavy over Kelly. Greavy again. Kevin Greavy. That's what I mean by boxing guys out of there. You can't go for that ball every time. You just got to tell their bodies and just box. Gail Goodrich. What a job he's done today. Gail Goodrich now with 25 points, and it's a 10-point game again. Bullets on top. We have 5-10 to play in the third period. Greavy forced it. He got it again off the offensive board. This time it was Aaron James with the ball. Jazz could cut it to eight. Lenny Robinson from 20, bullseye Lenny Robinson. And it's down to eight again, Mendy, with 4.53 to play, third period. And Robinson has found his spot. That's about the third field goal from the exact same spot on the court. A dozen for the truck. All right, they're going to give Henderson some room. They're not worried about him there. Unsell, great playmaker from the top of the key. They got it to Dandridge in the West. Bobby Dandridge has made four or five brilliant passes today. Now Rich Kelly came over and tried to double team, but nobody picked up Unsell. Now when you double team like that, you need help inside. Somebody fell down on the Jazz defense. All right, with the basketball, here's Goodrich to Kelly from 17. Jazz hanging tough. 82-74, bullets lead now, eight points. Henderson again. And what's the call going to be? Call against the Jazz. For a report of the Boston Celtics Denver Nuggets, let's go to Gary Bender, John McLaughlin in Denver. Welcome to the fans that have joined us here in Denver. The Denver Nuggets are in white the Boston Celtics. And the Denver Nuggets have just pumped it up to a 76-68 lead as David Thompson now with 21 points for the afternoon. Now the Nuggets going to the offensive boards, getting second and third shots and putting them in. That's a long ways for Wicks, but he got it. The Boston Celtics, John, have been battling back all afternoon long, trying to stay close, and now they're within six again. Ralph Simpson to Issel. Wicks comes away with it. They've been getting that ball inside against Boston so effectively this afternoon. Here's Maxwell, blocked nicely that time by Bobby Jones. Thompson. Off to Simpson. Havlicek brings it down. You can see Boston running at every opportunity, and Hondo gets two more. John Havlicek <laughs> just continues to play great basketball. That's called run-and-gun basketball. Yeah. 15 points for him. You know, the interesting thing about these two clubs, they move well without the ball. They execute well, and that's what makes it an exciting basketball game. Four-point lead again for the Nuggets, and Havlicek's got it, and here comes Boston again. How about that for a 37-year-old man? Huh? Well, Come on, guys! Let's go! Like that. He is something. 76, 74, 17 points for Havlicek. He's not even breathing heavily. They call him a bionic Celtic, and I understand it when you watch him play. He's got a fountain of youth somewhere. I know he does. And a tip by Thompson won't go, but Jones has got it. Bobby Jones! Bobby Jones makes it a four-point lead. The Nuggets with a 78-74 lead at 4.06 in the third period. Ah. Welcome back to Washington. This is Jim Carvelis, Mendy Rudolph. Our score now, Bullets 86 to Jazz 77. We have 3.33 to play in the third period. All right, Aaron James, long bomb, tough shot, batted out to Greedy from Hayes. Oh, while we were away, the Bullets scored four points, two on, a Henderson, two on Henderson free throws, and the Jazz got three free throws off from Goodrich with a technical and also being fouled in the act of shooting. Greavy drew the foul, and you saw the three-point play attempt, or at least the basket by right, and now Larry will try to make it a three-point play, and the Bullets have gone up by 11. Kevin Greavy, who got that technical, Mendy. At one point, the Jazz had it down to seven, but on two driving layups now, they cut it back up again. All right, Bullets lead now. 
88-77 by 11. Let me correct that, Jim. 89-77. The last free throw was not on that scoreboard. When you looked up, 12-point lead. The Bullets have scored five straight. Kelroy, a tough shot. And there's Unsell keeping everybody off the board. Again, as Mendy pointed out before, Jazz having a tough time getting a second shot. Here's Wes. Bobby Dandridge with Aaron James. Goodrich helping out on Dandridge. Kelly kept Unsell off the board. A bad release. Here's Hayes and Kelly. And the foul on Kelly. Bad pass by Kelly. That's four fouls on Rich Kelly. We'll be probably seeing Mr. Merriweather before too long. And the Bullets are getting it together again, Mendy. Kelly did a great job that time of boxing Wes off the board, pick up the rebound, but unfortunately caused the turnover on the bad pass, and there was no way that Elvin Hayes was going to be denied that board. From the top man right down to the bottom man. It just passes right down the line. Everybody pushes for quality. Willie Rawls, utility man. This is who we are and what we do at General Motors. My job is to replace uh, any absentees from here, there, all over the plant. Yeah, you know, you're not tied down to one job all the time. You run different jobs. Metal finishing, welding, soldering. But soldering, I think I enjoy soldering more than any other job I've done because there's a lot of skill in that. Yeah, the fellas keep something going all the time there. It's never dull around there. Yeah, they get along very good. Yeah, union's, union's good. Yeah, the people on the line, they have a lot of interest in the car. If I go out to buy a car, that's where I go, looking for a uh, General Motors car. Because I'm right, at, right there in the plant, and I see how they're built, you know, see the cars that goes into them. General Motors, people building transportation to serve people. Introducing the Kellys. From Fayetteville, North Carolina, the Kelly Passenger Radio. From Cumberland, Maryland, the Kelly Truck Tire. From Tyler, Texas, the Kelly RV Tire. From Freeport, Illinois, the Kelly Farm Tractor Tire. From Cumberland, Maryland, the low cost four ply tire. For whatever driving you're doing, the Kellys have a tire for you. The for Kellys. What a lot. Next Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports Spectacular presents highlights of the 1978 National AAU Track and Field Championships with top Olympians and world record holders competing. Plus, highlights of the exciting 1978 World Four-Man Bobsled Championship from Lake Placid, New York. That's next Saturday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the CBS Sports Spectacular. Be sure and stay tuned for the MVP award at the conclusion of the game, and that's going to be a tough selection. Elvin Hayes, uh, 22 points, 67 percent from the field. Gail Goodrich has hit his last eight shots for the Jazz, Mendy. Without Gail Goodrich out there right now, they'd have been really out of this ball game. But they've got a lot, a lot, a lot of time left. A whole got 14 bunch. and a half minutes to play yet. Two and a half in this quarter. Anything can happen in the basketball game. All it takes is three or four quick buckets. And Hayes shooting at 59 percent from the foul line. Got two more coming. Penalty in effect. Three to make two. Elvin seems to be aiming the ball rather than just throwing it up there for an easy 15 footer. He's aiming that ball. Doesn't figure a man that has such great touch from the field could uh, be psyched up that much from the line. But he got two the tough way. 91 77. They all count. Bullets 14 point lead. The Jazz made a run. They had cut it to seven a couple of minutes ago, and then the Bullets came right back. Here's Goodrich, who's finally missed a shot after hitting eight straight. It's Larry Wright. Watch this little guy. Is he quick or is he quick? But he blew the layup by Goodrich. Got Aaron James open. And Dandridge did not take the baseline away. They got it to McElroy. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. that shot a little bit. Oh, that wants some rain, I'll tell you. What an arc he put on that ball. That reminds me, remember Johnny Egan used to do that. He got out of it because Johnny was about 4'7", and he had to get it up that way. But what a great shot that was. Hey, McElroy has just drawn a foul. He couldn't handle Greavy that time. Three on McElroy, 91-79. Jazz turning the bullets by a dozen. Hey, Greavy's been a great asset to Dick Mata by pushing him into the backcourt. Oh. 
Greeby is so tall that it's very, very difficult for any backcourt man to guard him effectively, and this is what he's taking advantage of the Jazz right now. Hey, we got a great doubleheader game coming up after this game. Uh, Los Angeles at Golden State. No, talking about battling for wild card position. L.A. 29 and 27. Golden State, the last place team in the Pacific Division. They're 28 and 29. And it could very well be that the clubs in that Pacific Division will all make the playoffs. Ninety three seventy nine fourteen point lead for the bullets will be Golden State and Los Angeles in our doubleheader game Griffin in the game to Goodrich off the screen Gales now missed two straight Here comes Larry Wright Ballard in the game their number one draft choice this year Bobby Dandridge 15 points for Bobby Dandridge 95 79 very crucial point of the game coming up the next minute and 10 seconds or so. They've got to stay close. They can't get blown out through a 20 point lead now. They've got to start driving to the hoop, Jimmy. They're not doing it. There's Merriweather in the ball game now, number 31. Kelly has four fouls. McElroy almost threw an air ball. Dandridge to Larry Wright from 15. James, a good rebound and a bad release. Larry Wright has it. And now. Griffin kicked the basketball, so the Bullets are going to have it in. Now, Goodrich is going to take a breast. He's leaving the game with Slick Watts. There he is. Slick's in for Gail Goodrich. Goodrich has done his job today. The supporting cast hasn't been too good yet. Bobby Dandridge, smooth as silk. Bobby Dandridge, what a beautiful touch he has. Beautiful touch. 97-79. The Bullets now with an 18-point lead. And the Jazz trying to collect themselves, trying to stay poised. They're going to need some good shots. Merriweather, that's a pretty good shot, 15 feet, but he couldn't get it down. Ballard to unsell. West to Greedy. Devin, good block by Mr. Merriweather with 19 seconds to play third period. Greedy stole the ball from McElroy. With 14 seconds, they're going to look for the last shot. Greedy, an alert defensive play, and now. Aaron James has fouled Bobby Dandridge with nine seconds, as you see. So the Bullets have a chance to take a 20-point lead into the fourth quarter, Mendy. And the Jazz are slowly starting to come apart now. They're losing their poise. They're not looking behind. They're playing, I would say, lackadaisical basketball right now. And they've taken the guts out of themselves. Bobby Dandridge, 20 points. He gets one more. Unsell kept it alive. Greedy. And that is the end of the third period. And the Bullets have an 18 point lead after three here at the Capitol Center in a crowd of about 13, 14,000, loving every second of it. leaves this locker room till I find out who's been using my safeguard. Bob, your deodorant soap hasn't even been opened. Oh, what are you going to do, sue me? I want all that safeguard protection. Damn. Man, I'm a sucker for lather, and safeguard's deodorant lather is different. <laughs> for lather and protection, people love safeguard so much, it's always the smallest soap in the house. Larry, since we all love lather and protection, next week, bring a bigger bar of safeguard. The NBA on CBS will continue right after this word from your local station. Don't miss the music world's biggest annual event, the Grammy Award Show, hosted by John Denver, this Thursday night on CBS.
tonight for a report on the Boston Celtic Denver Nugget game. Let's go to Gary Bender, John McLaughlin in Denver. Welcome to the fans joining us here in Denver. The Denver Nuggets with a 92-88 lead with 10 minutes, 13 seconds to go in the fourth period. Boston is hanging tough. They trail by two at the three-period mark. Dave Ping is one of the reasons they've been playing tough, and you see how tough it is under the board. A foul inside. A loose ball foul. Here you see the penetration of Dave Bing. He's done it all day. If he had all the baskets that just went around like that and came out, he would have at least 10 more points. A loose ball foul. The Celtics with the ball outside. Havlicek, he has a miss for him any of those. Bobby Jones brings it away to David Thompson. Denver looks like they're going to open up some breathing room in this game, and Boston, just on sheer determination, has come back. They trail by four now. Bobby Jones. Well, Maxwell trying to play the passing lane. He knew if Jones got it in that deep, he was in trouble, but it was a be beautiful pass right over Maxwell's fingertips. Thompson with 25, Jones with 19 points, Issel with 18. They have a one, two, three punch here this afternoon for the Denver Nuggets. Armand Washington, Simpson on here. Dave Bing. Bing scored earlier in the game, hasn't scored that much in the second half. Rejected by Jones. Here comes Thompson. What tremendous touch that time by Thompson. Here's the Jones basket, the pass just over Maxwell's hands and dunk. So it's Jones and Thompson now, giving them a 96-88 lead. Havlicek now quarterbacking this team. Out to Kermit Washington, Darnell Hillman on him. That shot partially blocked. Hustling over, Bing's got it. You see Washington over there, he was trying to recover his own missed shot. It'll be Boston's basketball. Those Nets are really <laughs> surprising, aren't they? Boy, they're really playing well. John Williamson has helped them just tremendously in the last, what, two weeks he's been with them. Well, he won a game a week ago today in the last second, a game on CBS, as Maxwell brings it within six again. 96-90. Cedric Maxwell with 16 points. Bobby Wilkerson has just checked in, number 32, off to Bobby Jones. Darnell Hillman. Wilkerson, who had seven assists in the first half, and he has another one. I'll tell you, the interior passing of the Nuggets is outstanding. They do it every game, and of course, you saw right there, that was just a pick and roll where Jones went to the basket. Wilkerson found it. 21 points for Jones, and Stakem matches baskets. We have a man shaken up. It's Bobby Jones. Jones, I believe, got hurt. coming off here. Watch Jones go to the basket. See the pass, and nice. Bobby Jones shaken up. So they'll be looking him over. He's been on the floor. He's been fighting all the way. He doesn't know what it is not to play at full tilt. They say he plays like this in practice also. And they try to take him, tell him to take it a little bit easier, but he, he only knows one way to go, and that's all out. Well, you know, he won the award last year in the NBA as the most consistent and most productive player in the NBA. Right. Looking ahead, you're going to be doing a game between Milwaukee and New Orleans, John. Yes, I will be. And, of course, that's a big game for the Bucks. Every game is. They're fighting Seattle and Philadelphia. Seattle going against one another for that playoff position. And the Celtics go against those surprising Nets and Portland, Chicago. Now, Chicago losing a little ground now in that Midwest division. They're falling back in the pack. Seven teams now for three positions. Anthony Roberts. So we've got a lot of basketball Anthony remaining here. Roberts. 192. Roberts with four points. Anthony Roberts. He looks like he's going to have a fine career in the NBA. Here's Bing backing in. Celtics have to work awfully hard for any shot. Here's Stakem. Thompson on him. Nice play by Kevin Stakem. Now, it's important that the Celtics close the gap a little bit more. With 7.34 to go, they've got to keep close to the Denver Nuggets. All right, welcome back to Washington. Jim Carvelis and Mendy Rudolph, and the Bullets now have a 20 point lead over the Jazz, 105 to 85. We have 9.20 to play in the ball game, and the Bullets continue to roll here as they take apart the Jazz here at Landover, Maryland. And as it's been through the whole game, Jim, the Bullets have controlled the boards, they've run their fast break, they've controlled the tempo of the game, the Jazz are in trouble. Mike Collins, the dry look. Barbara Day, the dry look, look. Sure, he looks great, but I'll bet he's a stiff. What? Your hair, I'll bet it feels stiff. No way. I use the dry look pump spray. Leaves hair feeling as soft and natural as it looks. Mmm, not stiff. Regular aerosol or pump spray. 
in three different formulas. Get the dry look, and get the dry look look. And don't be a stiff. Is Gillette Foamy thick and rich enough to stop this super sports car? No. Is Foamy thick and rich enough to support this lovely lady? No. Is Foamy thick and rich enough to hold up this husky hiker? <laughs> no. But if you want a clean, close shave, it's more than thick and rich enough. Light beer for Miller tastes just great, and that's no fish store. But the best thing is, it's less filling. Light's got a third less calories than their regular beer. And that's important when you're trying to land that big one, like yesterday. I hooked this bass, fought him for over six hours. All of a sudden, he jumps clean over the boat. Broke my rod, and I had to tie the... No, wait a minute, fellas. I had to tie the Light line Light beer from down. Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Be out there with nothing but a paddle. Next Friday night at 11.30, CBS Sports presents live from Las Vegas a boxing special with undefeated Ronnie Mazel Harris, the number one ranked challenger for the world middleweight title, taking on the second ranked contender, Graciantona. That's next Friday at 11.30 p.m. Eastern. 16,505. Great crowd here to watch the Bullets and the Jazz at Capitol Center, Landover, Maryland. Got a terrific doubleheader game coming up right after this. Should be a goodie, Rick California Barry. rivalry. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Adrian Dantley. Should be a goodie. Golden State and the Lakers, both clubs trying to get in the playoffs. They're not going to win the division. You can bet on that. But they want to get in there. L.A. Golden State. That's coming up next. A doubleheader game. Lenny Robinson now. Ballard on him. Beautiful touch. Len Robinson. The truck. 105-87. 14 for Robinson. They've done a good job on Lenny, though, Mindy. Elvin's going to put it up. You can bet on that. Unsell, great position. There's Griffin scrambling for the rebound. Unsell's got 15 points. 17 has been a season high. Merriweather saves it nicely. Good effort. McElroy, Slick Watts, Elvin Hayes. An authoritative rebound. Bad pass. Just a bad pass. Getting a little sloppy out here now, Jim. McElroy, and now the Jazz. Cut it to 16 with 8.14 to play in the game. 105-89. 19 for McElroy. Ballard, nice pass and a nice pair. Greg Ballard, number one pick out of Oregon. Now look at Greg Ballard. He is a definite lookalike to Maurice Lucas. Isn't he, he is. The Portland Trailblazers? And the Bullets are hoping that he'll be as good. Probably one of the best power forwards in the league today. Maybe... Blue McGinnis in there, but Maurice Lucas will stand up against anybody. 107-89. The Bullets an 18-point lead against the Jazz. CJ, Charlie Jackson with the basketball. Looking for Hayes. Why not? He and Lenny Robinson. And a foul on Len Robinson. Until there's the pass to Ballard. There's the pretty play off balance, using the glass beautifully. A lot of body control out there. For a report on the Celtic Denver game, let's go to Gary Bender, John McLaughlin in Denver. Welcome to the fans here, Maneko Arena in Denver. We have quite a game. The Denver Nuggets leading by two, 104 to 102. Austin with the basketball. Dave Bing, who just scored a moment ago, tries to give it to Wicks, and he's fouled by Anthony Roberts. The Boston Celtics coming in here without Dave Cowens, Curtis Rowe, and JoJo Whiter hanging in here tough. Here you see the double up in the corner on Hamlet Tech. Watch the Celtics move the ball, but look at Ben go to the basket and make the play. He's been so valuable for the Celtics today in going to the hoop. That was Bobby Wilkerson that was guilty of fouling, and that's his second, the second team foul now on the Denver Nuggets. The change, Kevin Stakem coming out, Don Chaney coming in, and I'll tell you, Chaney has played very, very well. He has 16 points. Wicks at the line. And he can tie it up again. 
sometimes it's remarkable. You see a team like Denver blow Portland out of here after getting a high 22 to 4 in the first quarter. You think they could win by just coming on the floor this afternoon, but that's the game of basketball. No way. That's the NBA, and of course the Celtics fired up about Dave Cowan. Wicks with 14 points, 104 to 104. We've come now to the 450 mark of this final period. Thompson, up it comes. Wilkerson, he overshot, and here comes Havlicek. Ando Havlicek. Bing, and Bing starting to heat up. Bobby Wilkerson missed three key shots here for the Nuggets, and of course, I think the Celtics are aware of that, and they're trying to give help with Wilkerson's man. And Denver calls the timeout. There's the foul difficulty. Havlicek with five, Keeney with four, as the Boston Celtics have taken a 106 to 104 lead. 434 left to go. See what's new today. Last year, Chevrolet introduced a new kind of six passenger car. And like hot dogs and apple pie, America is eating it up. Now in its second year, the new Chevrolet Caprice continues to give you... More headroom. More rear seat leg room. More trunk room. More manageability in city traffic. More mileage. The beautiful new Chevrolet Caprice. Now that's more like it. You're watching television. I'm watching Selectivision. Television shows you what it was. Selectivision shows me what I was. And when. I've recorded my favorites. The best action, drama, sports. The best. Selectivision is the four-hour video cassette recorder from RCA. Nothing you want to watch on television? There's always something good on Selectivision. Let RCA turn your television into Selectivision. Fred sent in his tax return yesterday. Now he has to wait for his refund check. And wait and wait. Harry had plans for his refund money. He went to Beneficial, because Beneficial wants to lend you the full amount of the refund you expect, and more, so you can get going now. If you have plans for your refund money, would you rather wait, like Fred, or go, like Harry? At Beneficial, you could score more. Next Sunday, CBS Sports presents NBA Regional Action, with Milwaukee taking on New Orleans. Philadelphia going against Seattle, Portland tangling with Chicago, and Boston against the New Jersey Nets. That's NBA regional action next Sunday. There's some excitement here in the Mile High City of Denver. We have 434 remaining, and the Denver Muggets trail 106 to 104 to the Boston Celtics. Darnell Hellman in the lineup. Up it comes to David Thompson, Bobby Jones, Isbell, and Wilkerson. The others in the starting lineup as they come in, and Jones gets to England. Well, they do that so very nicely. They ran a play underneath to try to set up either Isbell or Jones. It didn't work. Jones goes out, sets the screen. Nice pick and roll. Bobby Jones at 23 points. Thompson with 27. Isbell with a total of 20. 106 to 106. The crowd really open it up now. We've got Cameron on Dave Bing. Dave Bing, Carl Shear, the general manager. You think maybe he's involved in this game? Boy, he's fired up. I say that guy, he, he's out there on needles and pins even when they're up by 30. Carl Shear, the president <laughs> and general manager of the Denver Nuggets. 351. Off it comes to Wilkerson. Broken up by Havlicek. Boy, Havlicek has done it all. He's got 23 points. Quick. And we have a foul coming up That's against it. the Boston Celtics and John Havlicek, and he's fouled out. That's the sixth foul on John Havlicek. And Havlicek broke it up at the other end. You can see here the pass going up. It's underneath it. Look at Bobby Jones intimidating. Havlicek coming in, and it's a foul. Boy, that could be a big turning point in this game. You lose Hondo, and you lose what looks like two points. So he fouls out with 23 points. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, this is not a brilliant statement. That's going to hurt the Celtics. So he's out, 341 to go, plenty of time. He's given them not only offense, but defense. Look at the crowd, John. They are up and applauding Havlicek. Yes, they are. That's for John Havlicek. He had 24 points Tuesday, 24 points Friday, and here today, 37-year-old John Havlicek has 23. They love him everywhere, don't they? He'll be back here one more time, and I'm sure the people here in Denver will welcome that. 
So we have a timeout at the 341 mark. It's 106 all. So Boston loses an integral part of their machine here this afternoon, and they came in here depleted to begin with. I just think it's remarkable, John McLaughlin, that they can be playing like this without, for instance, a Dave Cowan. Well, Gary, we mentioned this up front. This can happen. A club can get fired up. If you look into the, the huddle of the Boston Celtics, Sash and KC, let's go and see if we can hear what they're saying. Sad Sanders, you know, this is really a gentleman, a true sense of the word. Very dignified coach, 39 years old, and is number 16 retired by the Boston Celtics. Six coach in Celtics history. <laughs> Look at Larry Brown. You don't think this isn't a tough job? You're he on your need, knees now. He doesn't need to carry a board around with him. He's got the whole floor to draw on. And Washington, oh, they are pouring it on, aren't they? They've been hurt, but they're starting to really put it together. Free throws this half. Boston four of four, Denver one of two, and you look at the foul situation, Celtics have 14 fouls, and the Nuggets with two. Not a lot of fouls in the game, but of course, with the Celtics uh, on their next foul, they'll put the Nuggets into the penalty. That could be a factor also. 341, it's all tied up, 106, 106. The Nuggets with the basketball, Kevin Stakem is evidently going to be the replacement now as we have Stakem, Don Chaney, Kermit Washington, Dave Bing, and Sidney Wicks. As far as the Nuggets are concerned, they have Hillman, Jones, Issel, Thompson, and Bobby Wilkerson. The Nuggets have a very big team in there, not only up under the basket, but also in the backcourt. As a reminder, after this close one, we'll be going out west for the Los Angeles Golden State game, the second half of our CBS doubleheader. Darnell Hillman picked up by Cheney, broken up by Stakem. And the Celtics just won't give up in this one. Dave Bing now. He's got to set up. He's taken over leadership now that Havlicek has run out of eligibility. Cheney broken up by Jones. Stakem will retrieve it. Nine seconds now on the shot clock. Six seconds on it. Bing with four on it. Issel high into the air. Brings it out down to Wilkerson. Three minutes to go in the game. 106. It's all time. Issel backing in on Wicks. Wicks broke it up. Issel still got it. Broken up by Washington, and he's guilty of fouling. Kermit Washington picking up the foul. Well, Wick's very upset. He blocks a nice shot here, and this is the first time he's really intimidated Issel on a shot, but watch Issel stay with it. He's so tough. When he gets the ball inside, here he goes back up with it. I couldn't really tell uh, if he was fouled or not, but apparently so the official right on the play. Well, John, they now are in the penalty. So he'll have three to make two. Something you mentioned just a moment That's right. ago. That's right. You know, Issel gets the ball around the basket. He is not a lethal by any sense of the word, but he's so tenacious in there. As you see Simpson come in and Hillman go out. I tell you, Larry Brown has used his bench very well, hasn't he? He's used a lot of people. And of course, you know, in this type of game, it's important to do that to keep them fresh. Issel now with 21 points. It's still Thompson high with 27, Jones with 23. After that, it drops off to Wilkerson with eight. Two-point lead now for the Nuggets. 108-106. Take him off to Don Cheney. Cheney playing an outstanding game. Broke it up. Saved by Wicks. Bing. Tough shot. Rebound. Thompson. Off it comes to Wilkerson. Wilkerson handling the ball very well. Philadelphia now getting some distance between them and the Nets. 94-88. Here's Issel. Well, that big guy can put it on the floor also. Not only can he go left, he can go right. 24 points for Issel. He gets that, use that body weight so well. Here's Wicks. Broke it up. Here comes Thompson. And he traveled to the ball. Thompson couldn't get rid of the ball, and he walked with it. The Denver defense really tightening up when it has to. They're pushing the Celtics into the outside jump shot, and the Celtics missing it. And Boston's called a timeout. The Celtics with 2.08 left in the game, trailing by four points, 110 to 106. And Sad Sanders hoping somehow to pull this one out in a great effort by his Boston Celtics. 110 to 
All right, welcome back to Washington. Jim Carvelis, Mendy Rudolph. There you see the score, 124, 105. Bullets over the Jazz, time remaining a minute 27. Slick Watts, slick pass. Bailey having trouble, finally gets fouled by Joe Pace. Lit on the basket, Mendy. While we were gone the last couple of minutes, a little garbage time, Jim. All right, the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player Award goes to Elvin Hayes. Elvin, 31 points. He set the tone for this game early on with great hot shooting. L. Lenny Robinson under his average. And the Chevrolet $1,000 scholarship will be awarded to Houston on behalf of Elvin Hayes. Elvin not only played a great offensive game, Jimmy, he also did extremely well defensively. A minute five to play in the ball game, 126 to 107. Our producer has been Bill Barnes here this afternoon, associate producer Rick Sharp, director Bob Dunphy, uh, stage manager Gregory Reed, statistician Jeff Klein. 47 seconds to go in the game. It's been a big bullet win today. They go two over 500. Slick Watts. It's been that kind of a day for the Jazz. All right, let's go to Denver now for that big ball game, the Celtics and the Nuggets. Welcome to our game here in Denver. We have one minute and 59 seconds left as you watch a replay of Wicks going in, being fouled by Bobby Jones. The Denver Nuggets lead 110 to 106 over the Boston Celtics. But Boston just hasn't given up in this game. Well, they certainly haven't. That was a big play there. I don't really know if that was a call. Apparently it was. It came after a timeout. The lob to Wicks. It's amazing Jones even got close enough to him to foul it. He does not get the back end of that free throw situation. They're not yet in the penalty. They're one foul away from that. Four fouls against the Denver Nuggets. 110 to 107, a three-point lead for Denver. Broken up by Wicks. Wicks going for the steal on Dan Issel. And Issel down the stretch has really been a force in this game. He certainly has. This is where Wicks trying to prevent the ball from coming into Issel. And he must do that. Once Issel catches it, he's just very dangerous. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Thompson. Rebound Issel. Now, wait a minute. They're going to call goaltending on that anyway. That's right. This is nothing more than a clear out high for Thompson. And he goes up. Good defense, the ball's on the rim, and they call a goal to That's 29 points for David Thompson. 112 to 107, a minute 27. Be thinking about that MVP. <laughs> Here comes Bing, broken up by Issa. Jones up to Bobby Wilkerson. Wilkerson to Issa, blocked by Maxwell. They're going to jump it. I don't think Issa believes it. Maxwell says, yeah, and Issa says, no. Issa doing a good job of getting up the court, but Maxwell really recovering here very nicely. Here's the block. Dave Bing trying to get in there in the land of the Giants and eating Wilson that, basketball. Here you can see the ball being advanced by Wilkerson. He gets it into Issel. Oh, we didn't catch the block. Anyway, Boston has the basketball after the jump. 112-107. Stakeham in trouble. That was beautifully played that time by Bobby Jones. Bobby Jones again. Stakeham leaving the floor, and that's a bad thing to do because once you do that, you must commit yourself with the ball. Washington defeating Denver. Or check that New Orleans, as you saw it. Well, Washington really pouring it on out there. I tell you what, I think right now with 49 seconds, I'm going to give my MVP to number 33, David Thompson. All right, I'll put the pressure on you now. <laughs> what happens if I disagree? It goes <laughs> in the truck, right? You walk home. Yeah, Chuck Milton will decide it. So you got to come up with one, Eric. Hey, they uh, hit the inbounds line, so it's going to go over to Boston. 48 seconds left, 112 to 107, and timeout has been called here at McNichols Arena. And Satch Sanders now has a real uphill climb from here on. His team was able to take the lead at the 434 mark, 106 to 104, had a tied up, and now it's been Dan Issel and David Thompson down the stretch that uh, has put some breathing room between them and the Celtics. So I'll tell you right now, I'm going to vote for the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player to David Thompson. You, John McLaughlin, who are you going to vote for? Well, just to keep the pressure off of Chuck Milton, our producer, I'll agree with you, although I think you have to say that Dan Issel 
has been a real key here in the last four minutes, not only offensively, but with a couple of nice defensive plays. Okay, so what do you say? <laughs> the trainer won't let me get in. All right, I'll go with David Thompson also. So you're going to go with David Thompson. All right, well, David Thompson with 29 points. He's played so remarkably. Well, it's a tough decision. The I'll trainer won't let me get in. Because Thompson has 29 points, Jones with 23, Issel with 24. All three of those were likely candidates. And don't forget John Havlicek, who fouled out with a total of 23. Here is the reason that we're going to give the Chevrolet $1,000 scholarship to David Thompson. He has 29 points, 6 assists, 10 rebounds. And so that $1,000 scholarship will be awarded to North Carolina State on behalf of David Thompson. I have a feeling that North Carolina State will be getting a lot of those this year. Well, it was a tough decision. The pressure's off of Chuck Milton, though. He does not have to vote, unless you want to reconsider. <laughs> And Sandy Grossman, our director, yeah. he wants to get in he on He sure this. does. What does he know? As long as the decision has been made. Right. Now, don't count the Celtics out now. Stranger things have happened. 107 112. Many years ago, there's an old saying Havlicek stole the ball. He's not in there now, but someone else might do it. <laughs> there's our guy that we've given the Chevrolet $1,000 scholarship award to, David Thompson. Boy, boy. Well, you look back this week. He had 30 points Friday. He's got 29 now. He had 26 points on Tuesday. That's a pretty fair piece of work for the week, huh? It sure is. I don't see how he does it. It's, it's, it's just an amazing play. 112, 107. Bing brings it in to Kevin Staken. Don Cheney. Wicks wants the basketball. You can hear him yelling for it. Take it back to Wicks. Dave Bing wide open. 112 to 109. Celtics must point. get the ball back now and try to get two quick baskets or ideally a three-point play. We're going to have a backcourt foul on Dave Bing. You kind of put your hands up on that, John. And now Celtics on. over the limit there. Of course, that was in the backcourt. He's trying to commit the foul as quickly as possible, although I think I would have done it in the front court. 29 seconds left. You see the time remaining. Wilkerson with eight points. I feel like this guy got him started well, Wilkerson, this afternoon. Hasn't scored a lot in the second half. He has nine for the game. Well, those are two big points right there. 114 to 109. Kevin Stakem right in the middle. 23 seconds left. Only three points still. Not a very comfortable feeling. Wilkerson, by the way, has 10 assists in this game. There's Issel. He's fouled by Wicks. Wicks committing the personal foul on Dan Issel. Foul foul number 12, That's his fourth personal. And there Isbell is Seth personal. Sanders, Casey Anybody Jones, and John Havlicek. That's the first time I've seen John sit still. <laughs> well, they've done a good job today. Undermanned. Uh, they've come in here. They've played a very fine game. They're trying to apply the pressure now, double teaming in the backcourt, of course. And that leads a number of the Nuggets up in the front court. Actually, they had two on one situation. And Issel got caught passing the ball off rather than shooting. But he still gets two. And this will convert, so they've hit four big pressure free throws down the stretch. 116 to 111. Boston's calling timeout with 14 seconds. They have no timeouts remaining. Sat Sanders desperately now, trailing by five points in this game. Somehow I'd like to pull it out. You know, you look at the Denver Nuggets, John. They came in here 36 and 21. Last year at this time, they were 38 and 19. So that's very comparable to a year ago. But they feel, in contrast to last year, they're not going to fade like they did last season. Well, you know, they feel that they're stronger than they were. They feel they have more depth. And uh, obviously, uh, the way they've been playing, uh, that's true. And the thing that amazes me is how much change they have made as far as personnel is concerned on the bench. And their bench today was a very integral part of this win. Well, they always go to their bench a lot. And, and of course, many clubs doing that now, many clubs using eight to 10 people. And uh, if you're going to run and if you're going to pressure, you must use a lot of people. All right, Los Angeles Golden State coming up next out on the West Coast. Los Angeles did. Adrian Danley and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar combined for 50 points the other night. Golden State is getting quite a performance out of Parrish now. They're starting him in the center position. Well, these two clubs, of course, fighting for that playoff position. They're very close in the standings, as well as Seattle, Chicago, Detroit, and Milwaukee. And uh, I understand it looked like see, uh, Seattle beating Milwaukee uh, somewhere in the fourth quarter. We had that score earlier. That Pacific Division is really very difficult. You look at what they have out there, I would say that 
The only sure thing right now on that West Coast is Portland and Phoenix, and after that, it's a real dogfight. That's right. Of course, uh, in this division also, you have Denver, who they're winning uh, by a comfortable margin, seven or eight games. From there, it packs up very, very nicely, very tight, and it could go right down to the end of the season, depending on deciding who gets in. Milwaukee and Chicago tried somehow to get into there. 116 to 111 at the 14 second mark of this fourth and final period here in McNichols Arena. This is the second meeting of the year between these two. First game this year won by the Nuggets 109 to 107. So they'll meet two more times, once here and once in the Boston Garden. Here's Maxwell. Rebound Wicks and Wicks. They're not going to foul him on that play. They let him have it. 116 to 113. There's your time. 17 points for Sidney Wicks. In the backcourt to Jones. Wicks putting on great pressure back there. And Sidney Wicks picking up the foul. That is his fifth personal foul. So with four Bobby seconds Bobby left Bobby now, Bobby they head down to the other end. Going to the line, Bobby Jones, 23 points. He was out Tuesday, this was extracted. This young man's average just about what he did last year. He averaged 15.1, and coming into this game today, he was at the 15-point level. And it's been said, I think probably the best way to sum him up, he's a coach's dream. He can do it all. In the past week, he shot at a 68% clip from the field. 118 to 113. Bing driving down, he gets two, and that's going to end it. 118 to 115. The Denver Nuggets going out at 118 to 115. Over the Boston Celtics. has been named the most valuable player in the game today by CBS. This is the third. Atlanta over Maryland this afternoon. The Bullets a 19-point winner over the Jazz, and the man most responsible for that bullet win is with us here. Elvin Hayes, 31 points, a great all-around effort. Great game, E. Thank you very much, Jim. Matty, you got to ask something. With Len Robinson on the court today, did you dig down any deeper or bigger and better effort? Well, uh, I, I guess kind of because uh, I guess uh, over the last year or so, uh, Truck, I guess, been very kind of critical of me because... Uh, yeah, I've been doing this for 10 years. Uh, you know, I'm one of the top 11 in scoring and uh, all-time scores. And uh, but he he felt that uh, sometime that maybe uh, I was getting too much credit and the ball was coming too much to me when he was here with the Bullets. But uh, that's the way the offense run, and that's the way the coaches wanted it. And uh, I'm I can only do what uh, they ask of me. When you're on the court together today, was there any exchange at all with words between you and Leonard? Well, one time uh, he, uh, he made the statement to the official that uh, the officials was bailing me out, and I said, "Well, uh, I've been doing this for ten years, and uh, they haven't been bailing me out so far." Well, let me ask you one I question. I used to call him on you once from all the way. Mandy and I mentioned this during the ball game. What's happened to your foul shooting? I mean, you've got such a great touch. Has it become a mental thing with you? No. Uh, over the last, uh, you know, like my, my foul shooting, have really picked up. I think.